Oh man, I am not looking forward to this. Call it morbid curiosity. Call it stupidity. I prefer to call it buyer's remorse. Here is the 1 6 scale Legend Creations Iron Man 3 Iron Patriot, also known as. Uh, well, I, I, I am Iron Patriot. That's. Yeah. Here's the intro. Okay, if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I have dabbled with the HC Toys, aka Legend Creations figures before. They seem to do all right on the channel. People, you know, have a real, you know, genuine curiosity about them. So I decided to pick up the Iron Man 3 Iron Patriot that they did. It's all, it's pretty much just a, a recast of the Hot Toys version. But um, like the Iron Man Mark 6 before it, I wasn't looking forward to it because the quality of that Mark VI was absolutely atrocious. And I managed to salvage it by turning it into sort of like this weird battle damaged sort of ruined torso. So it was in like a sort of fixing up gantry type thing. But I don't think that's the kind of thing you could do with this figure. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do. But anyway, let's get on with it. I'm clearly a glutton for punishment. Up here, you can see it's got the Legend Creations, Iron Man 3, Iron Patriot. This is the MMS number from Hot Toys. I don't know why they did that, but they did. One tick scale collectible figure. There's the side, nice bit of typing. They're actually not bad boxes, I have to admit. There's nothing on the back here except for some warnings, not to three. I'd say you need to be a hell of a lot older to have this, because uh, you wouldn't want to give this to a four year old, I'd guarantee you that. And then you can see the logos on the side here. And that's actually quite a nice print box on the back. I'm not entirely sure if that was the same with the original box. I didn't bother looking back to see if it was the same. But you can see it's actually in nice packaging. The, you know, it's not really that damaged. Normally these things come beaten up in the post, you know, come all the way from China. But uh, yeah, it's not too bad. If we pop this open and we slide off the sleeve, you get on the inside, that was the window where the figure holds with the clamshell. There is the Avengers logo there. It's actually quite a nice print. It's not too bad. Simple text on the side, nothing on the back. Simple text on that side. Okay guys, let's open this up and see exactly what we get. And here he is fully kitted up. I've got him out. He's got a stand, he's got an extra helmet, and he's got two extra hands. He's got two repulsor hands two fisted hands and he's got that back cannon there and uh well yeah that this is exactly how it's going to look coming out of the packaging if it stays in one piece this bit here has already fallen off uh you can pop that off pretty easy i oh, know it's this bit here look it just slid off so you can push that back on but that falls off very easy and honestly even for the price you pay which was, i think i paid about 50 pounds for this 55 something along those ranges on ebay you can probably get it cheaper on aliexpress but i paid around that because i knew the seller and i trusted them and honestly uh mildly underwhelmed i mean you get you get some really good bits in it there's some nice touches but again because of what they've used you know they've just recast parts of the uh, iron patriot figure and then come mold uh, and then cast them in some sort of like hard rubbery plastic stuff like the torso here and this torso bit here and the thighs and the legs here they're all hard bits of you know plastic it feels like a really big sort of marvel legends figure but that's kind of insult marvel legends a little bit but um yeah I, I wasn't expecting much from this i really wasn't i didn't think it was going to be uh you know hot toys quality at all but I was hoping that maybe they'd push themselves to develop a little bit more and be able to give us a reasonable quality 1-6 scale Iron Patriot. But really what you get is just a, you know, a massive lump of, you know, plastic with some, you know, poseable parts. But the casting isn't very good on a lot of places, I'll show you in a sec. And the paint application is very underwhelming for what I would have hoped for. But then you, you, 
you know, yeah, I got what I paid for it, I guess. But anyway, let's just quickly go in and have a look. Okay, one of the first things to note is that on the back, this cannon doesn't really fit on the figure that well. You can see this stub here is way too long and this uh, recess in here is just a bit too shallow. So you push it in as much as you can and it goes in about that far. So you'd have to shave that down a lot. But once you get over that and you feel to yourself, well, you know, it's not too hard a job, I can mod that, just cut it down. In fact, you could potentially even glue it if you really wanted to. I don't know if you would, but the actual shoulder cannon itself isn't that bad. The paint apps aren't great. It's really horrible there. I don't know what that is. I think they thought they were weathering it, but it just looks sloppy. And you can see the paint apps and the sculpt isn't too bad. Just underneath there, we've got some transfers on it. I think we've just got some just here on the end. And then there's another transfers here. And yeah, you got a transfer just on the bottom here, just there, yeah. And then of course, you come down to the arm piece. And the arm piece ain't too bad actually. Hey, it's a bit crap painted there. Looks like the paint's worn away already. But if you actually bring this down, it does articulate. And then this swivels left and right. This goes left and right here. So it goes all the way around. Then this bit here swivels so all the way around. So you could actually shrink this down a lot more, fold it up, and it can go on his back like that. Ah, just like that. So it's all very neat and can actually fold down. But it, for some strange reason, when you put it on this side, it's a little loose. But uh, it's not too bad. It's actually one of the nicer pieces to this figure. But as you can see, there's some you know sloppy painting along here. Look at all these lumps very lumpy painting or it's actually taken from the mold and the mold has made lumps in the plastic and they've just painted over it either way it doesn't look very nice but as a uh, you know as far as the accessories go that's the best one although it doesn't come with a lot let's take a look at that helmet hey guy how you doing you all right you can see the paint apps are not amazing sorry the face the mask does come out and he does have a head underneath we can see there's got the paint apps are reasonably straight just up here. I'd say out of the two helmets, this is the best one, which is not the one you want because the other one does the light up feature. So you might actually have to go and do some touch ups on that light up feature, but I'll show you that in a minute. But that's actually not too bad. The definitions in the line here are a bit flat, but you can see there's a bit of slot paint on the chin here you can just you can just see it just over bleeds a tiny fractional amount but it you know it is a shame and then there's this weird lump let me see if i can get this closer to the lens but you can see just up here there's this weird lump on the plastic and they've painted over it looks like a our iron patriot's got a tiny bit of a tumor bless him and then there's a bit of a mess here on the bottom of the mask just there but if you wanted you could actually display this with the mask up and voila oops there is a magnet but it's very weak so we'll try and get it touching on as best we can come on and that's it and you can pull this mouthpiece down to show the face more and that's not a bad cast that head it really isn't a bad cast. There's a bit of gap in the helmet there, which ain't that great, but it's not terrible either. If we take this off. Oh, God. What are you looking at? I can't actually tell. You've got a bit of a dirt face, my friend. And you can see there's a bit of wonkiness in those eyes. From this distance, it doesn't look too bad, but probably in the camera, it's very obvious see that the eyes just don't look super straight but in terms of sculpt and paint that's probably the best HC toys have done except for the uh, Hellboy obviously I mean there wasn't much to it anyway but you can see there's the magnets behind the head sculpt there so it does sort of take away from the illusion a little bit 
And then, of course, if you really want, you can home alone and go, oh my god. Then we come down to the torso. And we can see there's some uh, flashing from the molding all the way around. And this paint app is not smooth at all. Um, if you are going to pick this up, I think you might need to battle damage it if you want it to look reasonably okay. Because if you, you know, sm ruin it and just like damage all the bits of it, then it might actually look like it's supposed to look like that. But uh, yeah, you've got these shoulder pads here and the shoulder pads are sort of glued into the shoulder here. And then the arms come down. There we go. See that shoulder pad in. And I could probably, if I warm that up a little bit, I could easily pop that out and then not use it again. And then underneath you can see there's a bit of sculpting with that shoulder arm there, but it's not great. And then one of the problems you've got with this is the arm is a bit loose here just on the bicep and then we come down and there's some sloppy paint apps there and then there's two different colors on the the uh, arm the bicep area there's a sort of bright red here and there's a slightly darker burgundy on the inside and actually on the opposite side it's the other way around it's very light on this side and dark on the outside so obviously what they've done is just recreated these biceps and made this one here made this one here so they're both either left or right biceps really which is a letdown you can see that star there just looks like looks like a marvel legends painted figure doesn't it i know i'm going to probably say that a few times here but you can clearly see it's not great is it but you can see there's an arc reactor there and i'm going to try and get that arc reactor to work but one of the problems i've got is getting this uh, battery compartment open I think it's on the back here and this side will come open but this side won't even move oh it clicked a bit and this bit won't click now for some reason there we go oh blimey first time that's happened i normally like i've, I've struggled trying to get that open a couple of times while doing this so it's finally open so let's have a look see if there's batteries in it oh i see a bright light there turn it around Voila, pretty sure, I'm not sure if that glowed white in the film or if it was slightly red, not certain. But uh, yeah, it lights up. And also at the same time, if you really wanted to, you could uh, pose this arm up like that. Take this arm gauntlet off here. It's a bit stuck, but you can do it. And there's a switch on the inside here. And that lights up, which is pretty cool. But one of the problems you've got is that oh, yeah, there. if I turn it that way, you can see it blocks all the light down the bottom. Then if you turn it outwards a little bit, the light comes through that actual clear lens a little bit easier. But it's loose, isn't it? So you'd have to pose it properly to get it to work well. You can see the trouble I'm having with this thing. It's, it's not great, is it? Let's be honest. We weren't expecting the world, though. Everybody knows these legend creations are shit. And then we turn it around. I'm gonna turn that lens off there because it's probably blinding you. It's blinding my eyes. It's a very bright LED. And you're definitely gonna need this stand because he doesn't stand up that well. Then for this side, they decided to give him the rocket arm sort of sticking out. And you can turn it on again, but there's uh, the light, you can see the light shines through, but uh, this horrible, horrible lens here on the hand has got a big seam right in the middle of it where it's some, some sort of flashing or something. Looks terrible, doesn't it? I mean, the paint application on the hand ain't too bad. It's not great, but it's not the worst I've ever seen. It's actually one of the better pieces in this. And then you can push this on. And if you angle it, you can get that light in a little bit more. Let's see if we can get that on. Voila. So it does light up, which is, you know, pretty cool. And obviously the bicep swivel on this one is a little bit tighter. And you can see the double bend in the arm. See if it's a bit loose there. But if you turn it all the way up, you get a reasonable 90 degree bend in there. Still a bit loose, but it looks okay. And it can get up quite well. There's no uh, forearm or anything. There is a lot of wrist swivel. 
there is a lot of wrist swivel but you can see in the actual insides of the arm here the uh, double bend in the elbow it works okay but it's just not great is it? it looks it looks very amateurishly painted inside and let's just have a quick look at that torso oh god look at it I bet you Howard Chan and JC Hong are shitting themselves look at it you got all these sort of like panels painted I'm not sure if this is mist paint or if they actually tried to weather it but you can see the paint actually fades at the end here which is definitely not actually like you know paint scratches or anything like that it's just where the mold is sort of where they've had to spray it they obviously haven't held it right or masked it off right and then you know it's slightly faded at the engines like someone's just quickly just gone shh, shh, that'll do they haven't actually checked everything and there's some red bleeding off into the silver vent here again not very good and uh like i said i've i quite like the fact that they've put the decals in they've done quite a bit of work by putting decals in which is surprising really if you come around the back you can see there's actually like silver bits here missing there yeah. you could say it was weathering but i don't see why you would but the uh, panels down the back here seem okay it's not too bad reasonably straight but you can see that red is bleeding off into the vent just on the end here again just here just on the edge and yeah they've put another transfer on the leg there there's also a little transfer on this vent here with an arrow saying danger which is probably what was on the hot toy which is really cool it's a really nice detail but when you're going into that length of detail and you don't even bother to actually make sure the basics are covered you're doing something wrong and obviously you've got this bit at the back and this this bit up here is just it's really rough like it's come out of the mold and they haven't made sure it was completely fulfilled filled in or whatever it's just a bit lumpy and jaggedy and there and again the paint bleed offs on this are quite a lot especially down here just up here i've just seen the red and the silver sort of merge with the blue there looks really messy but look disengage to service just here another transfer which is really cool but obviously this has had this has come out of some big mold they've just you know they've just taken the iron patriot and they've thrown two different bits of the torso into a mold and used this hard rubbery plastic stuff to um cast two pieces it's very basic it's not very good and it's really heavy here and it's the same with these bits here they're really heavy but these bits are hollow plastic so you've got heavy parts mixed with very light not very strong parts and that's going to cause a disbalance and this guy honestly i can't stand him on his own because the legs are not very good either they're the same sort of hard rubbery plastic here that they are here this isn't die cast we, we knew it wasn't going to be but you'd think they would actually go the extra effort and just cast out some legs put them all together rebuild them and do them properly but they haven't really which is a shame but speaking of his pins let's just have a look at what you get you can see this sort of crotch area has again got some bleed off just into it there this is rough this area here and then we've got these thighs and these thighs have just been pulled out of a mold and they've warped so you can see the warping just on the edge of this thigh here it looks terrible it doesn't look like machine doesn't look like a piece of metal it looks looks like rubbery plastic the same here as well and it's a bit rough on the edges it's a bit wonky and then where they've sprayed it they sort of sprayed it a bit thinner up here than down here so you can see there's sort of like a a line in the middle where it's darker and then it's lighter which isn't supposed to happen really that's the kind of paint app we're going to get with this type of thing and if we lift this up see the panels here again splodgy you can see the lines here this this is okay this ain't too bad no so are these bits at the back they're painted okay but these back bits of the leg don't lift up and again these bits are solid like really heavy chunky lumps of plastic and these bits in here are hollow uh joints hollow empty plastic joints 
So it's these parts are too heavy for this part to hold properly. And you can see this foot here, just down the bottom here, doesn't sit flush with the stand and you can't turn it, not really. So it doesn't really work. It's just, it's not very good. Maybe in a flight pose, it would look a little bit better. But uh, yeah, you get what you pay for with this guy. But then you get this um, little stand here and they've also used the Age of Ultron style stand. And they've got this Iron Man 3 Iron Patriot printed on the front here. They even used the Marvel logo, the cheeky shits. But that's not that's not bad. It still feels a bit hollow. There's not about you know. There's no substance to it. It does feel like a very cheap, flimsy stand. But it's still not the worst stand I've ever seen, and it actually works really well with this figure. But you're gonna need it because he ain't gonna he ain't gonna be able to sustain his own weight, if I'm honest. So yeah, I'm glad they included that. And then here is the other helmet, and we can see so they've got red on the faceplate there. And you can see the lines. The lines ain't too bad. But then there's some horrible, messy bits here. And then there's some mispainting there. Especially up here. You, you can see no, nothing, you know, gels as smoothly as you'd like. You know? And then this bit up here just doesn't fit properly. And this is where the light up feature comes from. Oh, I lifted that bit up. And you've got to try and get this back bit off, and it's really stuck. Come on. Oh, got it. There we go. And you can see that this bit just doesn't f sit flush to the helmet like it should. I think there might have to be a bit of modding, a bit of sanding down to try and get this to smoothly fit back on top properly. Because otherwise it looks like he's got a bit of a Mohican. And the light up feature is a bit pants if I'm honest. Won't even light up now. Okay, that's it lit up. And I know that our, light, our lights in here are bright, but uh, if you can look down, the LED looks like it's really low down in there. And it doesn't light those eyes up very well, does it? From the side here, it doesn't look too bad. From here, but from the front, it doesn't even look like it lights up at all. Bright, bright. Looks like it's off, doesn't it? That's disappointing. And they went ahead and put the freaking transfer on the panel there. I don't know what I don't, I don't know what they're thinking is. These guys really are like a law unto themselves. Okay, and the top of the helmet for the light up feature, I've trimmed down this little bit here so it fits more into this recess here because this was a little big and didn't fit properly. So I thought if I did that, then it could sit down firmly on top of the head and it wouldn't look like a Mohican so much. But as you can see, it wasn't that at all, it's just, this thing is just too thick and too big for this helmet. So now it, I've, <laughs> I've made it loose as well. <laughs> Off, on. Off, on. Shit. Really shit. Shit. Really shit. And you can see just how messily painted this is here. I mean, it's dark here, it's light here, it's even lighter here. This is the kind of paint job I do on my figures. And I'm crap. And because I'm a fool who can't keep well enough alone, I had to trim this down to see if it would fit better into the recess. But one of the things I missed when I was showing this is that this thing actually turns as well, but it's really stiff. So uh, you won't be using that too much, I don't think. But anyhow, this is shorter now, so we'll see that can fit into the back a little easier and more flush. Drum roll please, moment of truth. <laughs> Ding! Yep, that fits a little bit more snugly. It's still not as good as it could be, but it's not too bad. And you can see it turns like that. Voila. And here is with all the lights on, I've managed to um, put new batteries in that head sculpt, the light up one because I wasn't sure if it would actually work better with new batteries. And surprisingly, it does. It does light up a little bit more. You can still see it's not great, but it's it's definitely an improvement over the first set of batteries that were in there. So when you get this guy out of the packet, if it doesn't light up very bright, swap the batteries over and see if that doesn't fix it. But other than that, um, this is the Iron Patriot by Legend Creation. Um, 
Who should get this figure? Ah, uh, idiots with YouTube channels that want to show people this figure, I guess. <laughs> um, other than that, I don't know. Maybe if you're a, a collector and your teenager child, if you've got one, is harassing you for a hot toy. I want a hot toy, I want a hot toy, I want a hot toy. Maybe buy the uh, Hot Toys box and then, you know, put this figure inside the uh, official Hot Toys box and then give it to them as a gift. And then when they take it out of the packet and have a look at it all, they'll suddenly not want Hot Toys anymore because they'll just be like, oh, well, they're not very good, are they? And you'll be like, no, son, I was trying to tell you, they're shit. And then they'll be like, yeah, I'll move on to something else. <laughs> so you'll save yourself hundreds of pounds. But other than that, um, I'd say maybe if you're gonna display this guy really in the background, like like way in the background, like, like way, way, way in the fucking background, like so you couldn't see him, maybe you could get away with this guy in your collection. Um, but other than that, maybe repaints? If you want to, you know, practice painting Iron Man before you actually get hit the big time with a proper hot toy, maybe practice on these things. They might give you a bit of a heads up as to what type of masking you're going to be doing and also what kind of problems you're going to be uh, bumping into. But other than that, I honestly don't know. This isn't something like the HC Toys Joker that if you mod it a little bit, you can get something reasonably okay. Let me just move this to the side, move over here. And you can see you can put the Joker there. And he looks okay, he's a bit wonky now, I have to reposition him and stuff, and his jacket's a bit puffy, but you could do a body swap on this guy as well. Look, it's a bit thick here. But other than that, looks okay. The head sculpt's a lot better than it was when I actually got him in the post. I fixed it up a little bit, and he doesn't look too bad. And then if we move him over even further, I can even recommend, especially the accessories with this guy, he had tons of accessories. So it's worth getting that just for the accessories alone and the clothing, because then you could do other, like buy head sculpts and you know different bodies that you want to use and it will look great. But then you can definitely get the uh, HC Toys Hellboy. And the reason I'd recommend him is because if you do a bit of modern, he doesn't look too bad, but also at the same time, you get these pleather trousers and you get these beads and all these different accessories. You could easily swap these pleather trousers out for the pleather trousers the original Hellboy came with, especially if they've peeled and rotted to fuck. A lot of the pleather on the original Hellboy has rotted away on a lot of people's figures. So just grabbing this guy will actually bring that figure back to life. It's worth it for that alone. But if you can get away with it, spray the body and the head matte, um, weather the guns with some gun metal, and I think that's all I did. Oh, and I weathered the uh, coat on the edges here, so there's darker on the edges, so it looks dirty and worn, just on the edges, just along here. Weather the, weather the coat, he doesn't look too bad. Oh, he could always be better, and uh, he's definitely a lot brighter red. He looks a bit pinkish as well sometimes, but you know, he doesn't look too bad, and when he's on the shelf, it's quite a nice figure. But this guy over here, this um, Iron Patriot, I'm not sure I can really recommend him to anyone who's serious about 1-6 scale collecting. There's just a lot of bad paint jobs on him. I mean, from certain angles, he doesn't look too bad. Maybe if you put him in a flight pose in the background, you know, and keep it, like I said, keep him way back, you might be okay. But uh, he could also, you know, you could tear it apart, battle damage it, have bits of it all over the place with your Mark 42 figure, like the real diecast Mark 42, not that knockoff they did a little while ago. That was crap. But if you got this one and, you know, you, you weathered it and damaged it and battle damaged it all, it could look okay, I guess. So maybe for that. But if you're a one six scale enthusiast and you collect high-end, you know, figures, I honestly, I can't recommend this guy. Like I said, just get it for your kids so they can play with it, bash it around and have fun with it, or use it for parts of modding. That's it. But it's definitely not as good as what we've got with the last two releases. 
which were these. This is this feels a little bit of a step back, if I'm honest. And uh, I was expecting it because the Mark VI was crap, and I knew they'd be doing these uh, sort of heavy cast pieces of plastic, like resin, sort of rubbery resin stuff, rather than actually giving us uh, a something semi-decent. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe, and if you could do me a favor now, you can get the fuck out of my cave. I really, really, really don't know what I'm going to do with this thing now. Oh, I might just throw it out the window. Bye-bye, guys.